Hello, um, now let's go through session one, shopping cart. We're going to go through the process of creating a product from scratch. The importance of this is to, one, teach you how to create a product from scratch in your shopping cart and offer it on your website, but also to let you know that you're not limited to what's in the STN database. Um, that is just the STN database is an extra tool to help you create your products quickly, um, and it is a good tool, but you're not limited to what we have in our database. You can create whatever products you want on your website and offer them, you know, from your brick and mortar toy store. So um, let's get started. Um, first of all, let's look just a little bit at the front end of a product and its details and what that means. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll go create one in the back end. For a product, there's, you know, your description, there's the um, item number that you use in your store. There's the image that you have or images, and we'll do um, we'll add multiple images in this session. And there's also the um, description. There's the um, inventory, how much you have in stock. There's also safety information, which we'll go over a bit. Um, uh, the manufacturer, the item number, manufacturer number. Um, the ages recommendation, the fundamentals that it's possibly good for age, you know, play fundamentals, um, play value, um, the related products, and of course your shipping options um, on a per product level. And then there's also, again, like age, the brands um, that it's manufactured, and the categories that it's associated with. And I'll show you how that all kind of plays out. So let's jump to the back end, and then from the shopping cart component area, go to product editor. And again, now this displays all of our products that we currently have on our site. So if you just need to make an edit to one of your products, you could come back here, enter in the SKU, and you could go from there. And we'll go um, a little bit more into that, into detail on that a little bit later. But right now, we're going to create a product from scratch. So if we go New Product, and from here, you'll see that now we have a big form with information that we can populate for this product. Now, um, the SKU which is the one that you're going to want to pay attention to. The SKU is, if you're doing any point of sale syncing up from our website to your point of sale system, the SKU is the unique identifier that connects those two systems together. So if you have an identifier um, that you use in your point of sale system, like your item number or your manufacturer item number or whatever that field is that you're going to use to sync up and communicate, this is that field that you're going to want to put in here. So, so for, say for example, I if I use QuickBooks POS, the item number is what I'm going to use here. You could use another field if you wanted to, but as long as the system knows and that you keep them consistent, so you can't like use fields from different other areas in your point of sale system. It has to be the same field. So, I'm going to go ahead and put in my item number that's in my POS system, which is um, say two zero 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 four five. That's my item number in my point of sale system the name of the product. Um, this one we're going to add a product by um, Toysmith um, and the reason why I'm adding one from Toysmith is because Toysmith is not in the STN database yet. Yet I say and I would hope that everybody helps us get them in our database. Um, but anyway let's start with the title in Medieval Playset. <coughs> um, good thing to know is that the title is also, let's jump to the front end, the title, right, like this would be the title for this product, is also used in the SEO portion of it. This becomes the meta title for this page. So keep that in mind. It's important to make a good title and to make a good title is to describe the product as much as possible but without too many characters. So that's it's always a challenge to do a good title. Um, Let's go on. Published means is this product viewable or is it available on your website? We're going to keep it published so we can see it. The price, of course, whatever this product price is, it retails for $26. Um, then how many do I have in stock? Um, imported SKU, you can't edit. This only displays the imported SKU if you've imported it from the STN database. So that helps us keep, you know, kind of like if you're having a problem with a product, you can let us know. I'm having whack, you know, the product information is way wrong. That's the imported STN SKU would be displayed here. And again, we'll go over that when we go into the uh, import a product from the STN database. Quantity in stock, um, I've got 12 of these guys. Um, search ranking, um, this on the browse pages, if you go to a category, and you see how these are all categorized by relevance, 
you actually can give an ordering here, search ranking, that makes that product pull up higher by giving it a higher number than some other product in the the um, the display or the the in your that category. We'll go over in that more details later as well. Um, is this an on special product? <clears throat> on special is just a check flag. So, uh, for example, some some sites will have areas that display the on special flag check boxes, like these guys here. These are flagged as on special, so they display there because I have a check box. Your site may not take advantage of the on special check box just based off of the design that you worked out with with the, your designer. Discount. Um, we have discounts that we can assign products to, and I'll go over more details discounts later. But if I wanted to give it a 5% or 10% discount, I would select that discount now. And you can, you manage all your discounts, so you can give your dis create different discounts, either dollar values or percentage values, and you can select them from here. Um, okay, let's go next. Manufacturer. This is where you assign the manufacturer. And I don't know, let's see if we have Toysmith here. Um, we do, Toysmith. So, and I'll go over into manufacturers a little bit later too, how to manage your brands and manufacturers. The manufacturer SKU, this is where you would um, enter in the manufacturer SKU, and I actually do have this information up here. Let me grab it. This is the manufacturer item number for this product. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it and paste it over here. Now, again, we're creating this from scratch, so you may get it like a spreadsheet from somewhere, or maybe you, from your POS you're copying this information from and pasting it into here. But again, this is creating products from scratch. Here's the UPC for the product. Doesn't have an ISBN or EAN, so we'll leave those blank. Um, do I want to offer gift wrapping on this product? I do. So I'm going to check gift wrapping, and then it'll be an option then on the front end that the consumer can say, yes, you know, I want gift wrapping. <coughs> do not tax. Some products you do not want to tax um, or don't need to tax. For example, say you're selling a gift card off of your website, you wouldn't want to tax that because you'd be taxing the sale or transaction as opposed to the gift card. Or maybe um, you have you sell some clothing items and in your state clothing items aren't taxed. So you would check that as a do not tax. <coughs> Let's talk about now the product info. Product info is this, this here is the short description or the meta description. On the front end, all products, let's jump back to a product again. <coughs> Go to the same one. All products have a long description, which is this guy here, and they have a short description. Now sometimes in the browse pages, based off of the design of your site, you may have the description showed, whoops, sorry. You may have the description showed on these browse pages underneath each product or above or something of that nature. But that short description also gets used on the product details page as meta information. So if we were to look at um, exact example um, this page and view page info in Firefox, you'll see that here's the description. So that's important. You need you want to populate those out. I suggest we suggest that you don't go over 160 characters, but if you do, 250 is fine. It's just that it doesn't. The search engines use the short description to help bring in the queries or the queries from the your shoppers searching through Google. Um, but short description is very important, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and, like I said, I've got information here already. I'm just going to grab a little bit of this information that I have prepared for this training session, otherwise it would take too long. There's my short description, which is not very short in my opinion, so I might want to modify it a bit just to be more precisely as to what this product is. Um, does this product have any features? Basically, uh, <clears throat> anything that you can think of that would be features of a product, you would enter in here. And I don't can't think of any right now, but feature one. And then if you hit return, you can do feature two. Um, package contents. This is where you would place in the package contents of your, this product if you wanted to. Again, these are optional, um, but I highly recommend them because this information helps sell your product on your website. Um, here you'll see that here's the includes right in this description here, in the short description that I pasted in. And I'm going to go ahead and do this just so you can get the idea across quickly. So, and each return creates a new item, a new item in the list of uh, product, you know, package contents or features, same thing.
and I'm just gonna stop right there I know you guys know there's more but again I don't want to take make this too long of a training session um, keywords keywords is what gets displayed um, to the search engines they don't have a lot of value at least they don't currently at least you know that's what people say um, but the important thing is and I went and cleaned up all the product um, contents out of there the key but for example I could put castle and playset and you notice I'm separating with a comma uh, let's go to maybe toy smith maybe want to do a couple different versions of toy smith on here so if someone's looking for that castle toy smith product and they misspell it that would help bring it in um, again this is keywords that gets used in multiple places it gets um, fed to the bots to use for SEO search engine optimization as well it gets used as the as part of the search on your site for the products um, so that's the keywords again these are all optional but they help you with your product and get your product found let's click the next tab and this is the full description again I've already got something prepared so I'm gonna copy and paste that guy there we go copy and paste it so I have a full description full description is what gets displayed on the product details page and again this is the description that the people read it is also very important for search engine optimization that it has some good information about this product because um, really this is the content of this this page and the better the content the better that this product will pull up in any search engine um, so a good a good description is very valuable just like a good short description is very valu valuable attributes <clears throat> here's where you could set in um, attributes uh, not a lot of products in the toy industry have attributes um, a lot of clothing does but uh, for example an attribute would be um, maybe a size so I could go size and then I would do comma and do small medium comma large you notice this is the the first one's the identifier second one is the selection for selection medium and large say I needed to do another attribute list I would do a semicolon and then I'd start my second attribute list which would be maybe color and I would do a comma and I would say maybe like white green yellow so on and so forth. So you could just keep going on creating all the attribute lists that you need. Um, again, they're not just you can use you can use um, uh, attribute lists for more things than just uh, you know se color selection or size selection. Like um, we do have some toy stores that are creating events for that are going on in their toy store, and they're actually you know making it so that they have to select options on that event, whether it's an arts and craft event or something of that nature. Um, custom attribute lists um, again this could be uh, this is just a text field area so you could put maybe like child's name maybe it's a customized product that you need the child's name to make that happen <clears throat> that's pretty much it that's a pretty simple we'll see how that renders out on the front end features Again, features, ages, appropriateness, everything else. I know this product is, you know, from 8 to 12. So I'm going to go ahead and select those ages. Fundamentals of play uh, promotes independent play, works their motor skills, their visual, their creative pro play. I'm going to go ahead and say, and logical thought on this product. It does have, this product does have small parts. So that is one thing you'll, it'll display the choking hazard. No other ones, um, but I'm going to go with those. And this is, I'm going to say this is um, a gender for boy more than anything else. Boys under castles. You could do both, but I'm going to go ahead and just go with boy. Batteries, no batteries required, but here you could do a list of the batteries that were required. For example, uh, two D batteries, whoops, two D batteries. maybe four double-a batteries or you could just say better in batteries included something of that nature 
um, safety text. This is just more safety information if you need to display it or feel the need to display it or the manufacturer requires you to display it. Like for example if you're selling buckyballs you would probably, I think they have some type of safety message that they are requiring you to display here. I'm going to go ahead and leave this guy blank but this would display along with the safety hazard warning, choking warnings. Um, categories. Here we are in categories I'm going to make this guy, um, I'm going to assign this to multiple categories because I feel it is arts and crafts because it is a building set, play set. And then I'm going to say it's part of pretend. Um, you could also, and we'll get into categories in more details, you could create multiple categories and assign it like say maybe you have a category that's for knights and mythical or something like that. You could assign this product to that and we'll go into that in more detail. Packaging. Here you put in the length, width, and height. Um, I'm going to pretend I know the length, width, and height in this product. I'm going to say it's 16 length, 14 width, and 4 inches high. So it's the box. Um, the packaging is what I'm doing on this one. Weight. This guy weighs, say, 3.25 pounds. Now the weight, again, these are all optional. But the weight is required if you're using a shipping calculator that is calculating the cost of shipping based off of weight, like a UPS, USPS, or FedEx. And we'll get into more detail in shipping calculators and what your options are there. Um, unit, you can leave this blank for right now. This would be like if you were having, if you were selling a batch of them in one package, like say there's six of these in this case. Uh, shipping override. Um, I'm going to leave this alone for now, but this is basically if you want to set the shipping cost for an item, you can do a shipping override and you can say how many in quantity, um, or you can say apply the shipping apply override as a handling fee, or you can even say that if this product's in the shopping cart, the minimum shipping cost has to be a certain amount. Um, and again, I'll get into more details on these on the shipping. Now let's add some images. Um, I already have some images for this product on my, my computer, so I'm going to upload those and they're on my desktop and let's see where are they, I've got a bunch of stuff on my desktop hmm oh here we go here's the one image oh it gives me alert to save this product first say yes so it's saving my product can't upload an image until your product is saved now it's uploaded my image. I've got a second image actually that I want to upload too. So I have two images for this product. And there's the second one. Now you'll see that I have the two images there. Um, they're not, they come in not published. So if you wanted them to be seen on the front end of your site, like if I left these guys like the way they are now, they would not be seen. But if you want to publish them, you can select it and then publish it. Now what you can also do at this time is choose which one you want to have as your thumbnail on the front end. If you notice, if we go back to the browse page, this image here is considered the thumbnail image. It's what gets displayed on the browse pages or any other type of module that loads in an image. Um, that is the thumbnail image, <clears throat> the, the, the one that gets used for all those different things. So I want this guy, the one with the box, to be seen as the thumbnail image. So I'm going to say heart mark favorite. So this is my favorite one, my important one. But this other one will get displayed on the product details page, which I'll show you in just a bit. Um, you also have the ability to um, add a video and you do that via through YouTube. And I'm going to quickly jump to YouTube. <clears throat> and I'm going to just grab a video rather than take the time to find one. Um, so let's say uh, let's just do a quick search for night toy. A lot of Batman toys. So let's just click on one of these guys. Let's go with this guy here. This is a video here. Um, if you notice, oh, we have to skip the advertisement first. Okay. 
skip the advertisement. Here's this video um, from Mike Mozart, Toy Guru. Now you could have your own video channel on YouTube and use these videos, but if you look here, up here in the URL, which is what I was really trying to get to, is you'll see the, the URL for the video. Now you could grab the whole URL and copy and paste it, or if you, can, if you want to, just this part after the equal sign. So I'm going to grab it, copy it, and then go back to my product. I'm going to click the YouTube button here and I'm going to paste it and say add video. Notice there's the video that we saw we found. It's not published just like the image so go ahead and publish it. Attachments are for things like maybe directions on how to play a, a game or maybe assembly directions for that product. Um, that's what attachments are for and they can you can attach say PDF files or Word docs or Excel files or CSV files. Again these display on the front end. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and not jump into that right now um, but I am gonna say we're done with this product so let's save it. Um, before I save it though I'm gonna copy the name so we can go find it on the front end. So hit save. Let's go to the front end of the website and go to the home. Let's go ahead and paste in here the play medieval playset. And there it is. And the way our search works, just so you guys know, it was an exact find, so it comes at the very first of the search return. You'll see that there's other items in here with either medieval or something that's relative to this castle search. Let's go look at the full details page and you'll see now there's the main one that we hearted which is the thumbnail. Here is the second image that we added and here's the video. So if we actually click on that guy now you'll see that oh here's the video for it. Click in this push play and you notice that there are the images in the pop-up. They can add to the shopping cart from here or go ahead and close. There's the title that we created. There's the item number out of my POS system that we'll later use to sync up the POS to the shopping cart. My price for the product. The long description. And if we right click and say view page info, there's the short description that we made and the keywords. Um, here are the it's in stock, so I have stock checked. Uh, here are the, here's the size that we made and the color. And here is the child's name, that other attribute that we created. The choking hazard that we assigned to the product. Here are those features that I added, which were just feature one, feature two, just to keep the thing going along. Here's the product con package contents. And here's the other product specifications by Toysmith, uh, the item number, manufacturer item number, which is good for search information, uh, the batteries that's required, uh, the UPC um, recommended for ages 8 to 12, the age value, the 16, the dimensions, the weight, and the gender. As well as if you go down here now, you'll see that the shipping, the estimator, um, went ahead and estimated the shipping for it. <clears throat> um, and there's fundamentals as well that we signed. Oh, we didn't do related products. Um, that was my bad, but we'll get to that. So um, that's it in a nutshell. We created a product from scratch and um, let's go ahead and if you want to go ahead and step to the next video, which is importing a product from the S10 database. Much faster, faster process. And thanks.